You may have seen the news that quote-unquote extreme misogyny is to be treated as terrorism by the Labour government under the orders of new Home Secretary Yvette Cooper. And further to that, Labour MP Jess Phillips has been speaking to LBC about what the Labour Party intend to do and why. Because if there's one thing that wayward young males need to turn into strong, moral, decent masculine men, it's bullshit aggressive and woke female MPs that have all the tact of an overzealous bossy HR lady. I'm sure that's going to inspire lost young men to change. But anyway, as you may well predict, this is typical Labour Party policy, just like Keir Starmer and the riots. They're attacking the immediate cause without bothering to look into the actual fundamental issues going on behind the scenes. Uh, The National Police Chiefs Council concerns there about the growing uh, rise in sort of misogynistic attitudes amongst young men, largely because of uh, online content that they're seeing. Um, and, and this isn't, and let me just be completely clear, about criminalising people who are uh, showing uh, signs of an ideology. It is about preventing that ideology. So it's safe to say they're going to criminalise men who have an anti-feminist ideology then? Uh, and I, I don't like to give any particular person any kudos, but the, the likes of this sort of online misogynistic trends that we have seen in the last nine years. She means people like Andrew Tate. Are completely and utterly ignored by uh, that. And so this is looking for the gaps and ensuring that we're doing everything to try and counter extremism before it turns to terrorism. Terrorism is the use of violence for political aims to try and change the sway of a political or religious body. Now, of course, I agree that the physical and sexual abuse of women is a terrible thing that needs to be worked on, but who is doing that for political reasons? This is just hyperbole. Secondly, when she's saying all of this, do you think she's talking about grooming gangs or, you know, the Muslim man recently who walked free from jail after beating his daughter with an iron bar because he thought she went out with a boy? I don't know about you, but my spidey senses are tingling a bit here, and I'm thinking that the Labour Party may be using the safety of women and girls as a cover to crack down on anybody who has anti-left-wing ideas. After all, the problem here is who decides what's misogynistic and what is not? Who decides what's extreme and what is not? It looks like it's going to be bolshy left-wing Labour MPs. And my experience with them is that anything to the right of Jeremy Corbyn's social views are seen as hateful and problematic. Is the line where we fear an attitude or an opinion is going to stray into a crime or, or an act of violence? Is that the line we have to draw? We do. You just use the exact same test you would with far right extremism and Islamism, wouldn't you? The, the same test w- would have to apply. Um, and, you know, the, the idea that it's, uh, I mean, people can hold their views views about women that, they, you know, all, all they uh, like. Uh, and, and believe me, they let me know them all the time. Um, I've had some choice emails just today, um, but the the there is it's not okay anymore to ignore the massive growing threat caused by online hatred Mm. towards women. Now, I apologise for subjecting you to such a long clip of waffle there, but I thought it was important to exhibit the irony. She's talking here about ignoring violence towards women and girls while totally ignoring the question the guy asked. I mean, the question was, where are you going to draw the line? And the answer was, I guess it will be like far-right extremism and Islamic terrorism. So that would be like making threats to women then which is already illegal. And then she waffles on for the best part of a minute about how she gets horrible emails, and I'm sorry to hear she gets nasty emails, but that's not answering the question. She then just ends with the same emotional rhetoric the interview started with. Well, well, unfortunately, unfortunately, in cases of people, luckily, thankfully, it is relatively rare, notwithstanding the recent uh, outbreaks that we have seen, when extremist misogyny then goes to harming women, it would be really good to see, you know, yeah. the response of our nation massively improving, which is why the government have uh, made it a complete mission, uh, cross-government mission, to halve the incidences of violence against women and girls. But we cannot also, we cannot just do it in a domestic space. We have to look at why these attitudes are growing mm-hmm. and why, specifically, it seems that they are growing amongst the young. Now, there was a lot of waffle again there, but she ended on a very important question, and that is, why are young males turning to figures like Andrew Tate? 
Well, I'd like to have a crack at that with some of the reasons the Labour Party and left-wing types always ignore. Maybe young men are feeling deeply lost and don't know who they are. They've suffered years upon years of leftist education and brainwashing that's demeaned and debased what masculinity is. They've mocked the role of men, especially fathers, and removed the divine role of a loving father in the home. They've destroyed the family unit via left-wing ideology. They've promoted single motherhood, again casting out the father and meaning young males grow up without stability and influence. On top of that, they've lionised women as some kind of super beings that don't need men. They've destroyed men-only spaces. They've crafted a society of personal gain and destroyed emotional bonds, especially those between son and father. That was the heart of the Christian tradition. Tradition, by the way, which they've also destroyed. And remember, feminist left-wingers and women have pretty much total control of the educational system now as well, so this has happened on their watch, remember. So young men essentially have two choices. On the one side, they've got the bossy, finger-wagging feminist women who tell them to shut up and be silent and be part of the furniture, to not have opinions and to not grow into any form of a decent man because masculinity, after all, is toxic and something atavistic from the past that needs to be thrown away. Of course, doing this doesn't create healthy young men. It creates weak nice guys who don't know how to act, don't know any sense of duty, don't know how to stand by a woman and wouldn't know how to stand by a family. Just look at this fella as he runs away, leaving what seems like his girlfriend to face robbers by herself. Now, as I've said before, I'm not a big fan of Andrew Tate and his worldview. However, I can see why young males are drawn to him. He's brash, he's arrogant, he's edgy, he's like the cool older brother to impressionable young men. On top of that, he tells them that they can achieve something in their lives if they put their minds to it. So while he undoubtedly says and does the odd stupid thing, you can see why testosterone fueled teenagers are drawn to him. He's like the shadow side of the present over-feminized culture. But of course, the Labour Party types don't understand the role of a healthy, strong, authoritative male figure. If we had figures like that in the core of the culture, there would be no Andrew Tate. However, because the Labour Party types hate them too, we're now left with them trying to implement policies which enforce feminism, and that creates the Andrew Tates of the world. Are you suggesting that actually it, it might need to be toughened up further than the legislation that was passed by the Conservative government? Well, look, we are going to have to have a look at across the board doing what the Home Secretary has set out in this sort of evidential sprint with both academics, uh, experts in the field and all of the agencies that deal with this education and police uh, and others uh, and look at where the gaps are and seek to fill them. I'm not going to preempt what it's going to say. What Jess Phillips is talking to here is what's known as the devouring mother in psychology, a force that squeezes young males dry and tries to protect them from danger and mould them into good little boys. All that does is take away their masculine instincts, which should be used for good, and create shadow sides, anger, rage, jealousy, envy. In order to fix wayward young males like this, you don't need more feminism, more women and more Labour MPs. You need men. You need male elders. People that can lead in the home, in the sports teams, in education and in the broader culture. This is how young men learn respect for society, respect for women and respect for themselves. And yes, there's a little bit of fear they've got to have in there of their male elders. As the great teaching in the Bible goes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's that bit of fear that enforces obedience in wayward young males and in time that fear turns into a love, a love for one's family, a love for one's fellow man, a love for one's society and a love for one's nation. And in time these young men who were once wayward have learned the ways of the tradition and then can pass the wisdom back on down to their children and their forebears. That was the model we once had in Western society. It guided our country, but guess who destroyed that? Yeah, the Bolshe Labour Party types. However, until the civilizational rebirth comes, we'll have to endure yet more chaos. These are just my thoughts, however. Do let me know what you think down below, and do consider subscribing to the channel.